Okay, we just went over our goals and I kept throwing a term around called credible sources. So what do I mean by that? Credible sources are ones that you can trust to be accurate. They're reliable. Credible sources have already gone through an evaluation process by experts. Facts matter. The truth matters. Credibility matters. In fact, they matter more so now than ever. I want to just share a study with you from the Stanford Graduate School of Education. It applies to young people, you know, young digital natives who are born with the internet and technology in their hands. This new report from the Stanford Graduate School of Education states that when it comes to evaluating information that flows across social channels or pops up in a Google search, young and otherwise digital savvy students can be easily duped. But I'm going to stick up for you for a minute. As of late, it's not just young people anymore who struggle with evaluating information. Everyone is struggling lately. Fact-checking, even in casual conversation, has become a full-time job. More from the study states that digital natives, you know, that's you, you may be able to flip between Snapchat and Twitter while simultaneously uploading a selfie to Instagram and texting a friend. But when it comes to evaluating information that flows through social media, you are more likely to believe anything you read on the internet. Plus, like I said, Everyone lately tends to believe what confirms their own prejudices in favor of or against one thing, person, or group compared with another without fact-checking. Being right has become more important than the truth and facts. So let's change that today. The Stanford Education Group states this involves teaching students how to find accurate, valid, and credible sources. And that's exactly what we're going to do together today. I also want to show you that this is not just a high school thing. College libraries, I like to use Purdue University as my example because it's so close. They have 668 credible databases that you would be expected to use if you're a student there. And once I put this presentation on the website, feel free to click and make sure that I am telling the truth. We are only focusing on two of those, just two. We're using Opposing Viewpoints and Explora. And the really cool thing about that is both of these resources can be found at Purdue. I think that's fantastic for ninth graders to already be using these for their research. Articles from these two credible sources are even cited for you in MLA format. I'm sure you've been told this is something that you're going to have to do for this project. Let me stress again, for you, you don't have to do a thing. You have Mrs. Kozma's permission to copy and paste. For web pages you Googled, you have to cite it yourself. Now, Easy Bib's going to help you, but it's not easy. It's kind of tedious, so you've been warned. In addition, you also have to apply the crap test to web pages you found just by Googling it. And we'll go over that later in the presentation. So we're going to take a look at our two credible sources for this project. We're going to look at Opposing Viewpoints and Context, Explora, and we're also going to add a third, Books. One, you're surrounded by them not right now. And two, You've been using them since the very beginning of school. Once we go through the presentation, we're going to use the examples bullying and school dress code. Okay, let's get started with our first one. Okay, we're going to take a look at opposing viewpoints. I tried to make this super easy for your class. In fact, if we go back to the Lowell High School Library webpage, what I've done is organized all of your resources in a night nice section called, if we kind of just scroll down here, English 9 Research Project Credible Evidence. And I've listed underneath everything that we are going to use for this project, including Opposing Viewpoints, Explorer Encyclopedia, Books in the LHS Library, and we're also going to add Using Google with the Craft Test Worksheet and some other resources to kind of help you out. 
So this is what the whole point is. We're looking for evidence. So now let's go ahead and take a look at opposing viewpoints. So I'm going to click on it. And I'd like to let you know that opposing viewpoints is my favorite database. I love opposing viewpoints because it gives both sides. There's no better way to prepare for an argument, debate, or persuasive project than by looking at the other side as well. It's important to understand both sides of an argument in order to attempt to persuade someone. The best way to prove your point is to provide specific reasons and credible evidence. So let's take a look. One of the ways you can begin if you're still kind of iffy about your topic is you can go over here to this light bulb and you can click browse issues. Now if you sort of scroll, these are all the issues that are, going to, that are going to give you what I call the whole kit and caboodle page. You're going to get everything. Now if your topic isn't here, that doesn't mean you aren't going to get anything at all. It just means that you're going to get a little bit less than someone who chose one of the more popular topics. Something else that I want to point out is if you go up here to where it signs in with Google, there are all sorts of neat tricks you can do with this database. Now, learning all the tricks of opposing viewpoints isn't part of our assignment today, but as you go through high school, it can definitely come in handy. So I'm not going to go through those now, but I did want to just kind of let you know that they're there. So we said earlier that we were going to use school dress code as our search term, just so we could practice together. Now, as I start typing, you're going to see something interesting happen. Even though I'm spelling everything correctly, it's going to give me a suggestion. The best thing to do is to grab their suggestion. It doesn't matter if you spell it exactly the same way. It's going to matter whether or not you use code instead of codes. These are just these little idiosyncrasies with this database. So the best thing to do is if it gives you a suggestion, grab it. And so it gave me a suggestion for school dress codes, so I'm going to grab it. So then we're going to get to what we call our main page. And the really cool thing about the main page is that this is not just one source. This is hundreds of separate sources housed on one page. My advice is to always start with the introductory paragraph by clicking view more. So we may have an introductory paragraph or an introductory article, but always click read more. So as you read through to kind of familiarize yourself with your topic and decide that this is going to work for you, one of the things I suggest strongly that you do is to grab the citation for your article so that you can easily get back to it. You have two ways to do this. Now let me stress, this is extremely important. This is the mistake students make. When they want to get back to an article that they definitely want to use, their natural instinct is to go up here in the address bar and copy and paste it. Well, you're going to be extremely disappointed when you try to get back to your articles because it's not going to work. The reason it's not going to work is because we pay for this database and we can't be sharing these web addresses and giving them out to everyone who does not pay for the database. So, in order for you to get back to the articles that you want to use, you have two choices. You can choose the citation tool up here in the upper right hand corner and it is already in MLA 8th edition because that's what we're going to use and you can copy and paste that and save it somewhere so that you can get back to the article. And they actually keep it in two places for you. If you scroll to the bottom, it's right here too. Let's say maybe it was slid over to something else because there are different ways to um, cite your papers, but we're using MLA 8th, just make sure it's on there and copy and paste that. Okay. So once you've sort of familiarized yourself with your topic by using this introductory article, then it's time to move on and we're going to find some more. We're researchers right now, so we're going to really dig deep. So if we scroll down, we can see that on this page, in addition to our main article here, we have another seven featured viewpoints. We have six reference materials. We have 55 magazines. 
We have an image that's free to use and with no copyright issues. We have one statistic, three audio files, three websites, and the cool thing about the websites found on the database is they have passed the prep test, so you don't have to do it. And we've also found 142 news articles. So if we kind of start just poking around, if we go ahead and start with our featured viewpoints, We'll just go ahead and take a look at the articles listed and see which ones interest you. For example, there's one that's just pretty general talking about should schools have dress codes. And everything you click on, same thing. You can grab your citation here or all the way at the bottom if you think it's going to be something that you are going to use for your paper. If you're not going to use it, don't pretend like you are. Don't grab the citation. So if we go ahead and hit our back button, another one that looked pretty good, how about dress codes that restrict natural hairstyles harm black students? If that fits into your paper and your argument, you might want to use that one. And then there's another one called shoulder shaming, girls at Utah High School. Why the big cover up? So that might be something that sort of interests you. So if we go ahead back up to the top, let's click on news because we have 142 news articles. So when we click on them, we're going to have quite a few to run through. And one of them that looks sort of interesting, black girls say DC school dress codes unfairly target them. Now they're speaking up. So that might be one that you want to click on and use. Um, I found this one really interesting because I know that we kind of went through this at uh, low high school a while back leggings too distracting a mom takes on sexist school dress code so that might be something that you wanted to add so let's just kind of recap we also have reference magazines image statistics audio websites use them all and once again those websites just because they're here have passed the crap test so those are free game and copying and pasting the address and the address bar, once again, if we go up here and do that, it's going to guarantee that you're going to lose your work and there are going to be a lot of sad students in class. I see it every year, no matter how many times I stress it. So something else I want to stress that's very important. You are actually finding information in these articles. If you didn't find anything usable, in any of these articles, you aren't citing it, you aren't saving it. That doesn't even make sense. This is one of the mistakes that students make that blows my mind. And I always use this example. I don't know if it makes sense or not, but I really, really try. So this is my example to kind of drive the, price, the point home that if you don't use it, don't cite it. If I were baking a cake, this is what I would buy. I would buy sugar, flour, eggs, butter, and some baking powder. I would not buy sardines, pickles, and hot dogs. Just like for your cake, if you don't need it, don't buy it, and don't pretend like you're using it. If you don't use the information, don't cite that information. If you bring me a finished product and then say, I need three sources, Sorry, but you failed the project. If you finish the project and then say you need sources, obviously you didn't get any of that information that you use from any of those sources. That's not how it works. Um, if you need further explanation on this, please come see me because this is where I see most of the mistakes happen. Okay, this actually wraps up opposing viewpoints for us. Now we're going to take a look at Explora. Okay, now we're going to take a look at Explora Encyclopedia. So we're going to go back to that section that I created for your class that lists all of your resources. And I'm going to stick with the dress code as my search term. So I'm going to scroll down back to your guys' class and I'm going to click on Explora Encyclopedia. Okay. So up at the top, 
there is my search bar and um, this one I'm going to show you a couple of things. So if I put in student dress code and this is why I don't want you guys to work alone. I actually want you to come see me and work with me. So yes you get 210 different articles and that's great and over on the left I have already limited it to full text please do that because you don't want to waste your time going through articles that you're going to have to pay for so if you're doing a research paper for college you might have to go the extra mile and not have any other option but to shell out the bucks in order to get access to that article but we have so much at our fingertips right now we don't need to do that so another search term that we used was student dress oops, student dress codes same thing looks good but watch what happens when I just put in dress code When I put in dress code, what's going to happen is you're going to get a topic overview. And this is sort of like that introductory paragraph and introductory article that we used in opposing viewpoint. So I, I like for this to be able to come up and sometimes different search terms just won't pull it up. So come work with me. We'll find the correct search term and we'll try to get the best information together. So I always recommend to start with the topic overview. And don't forget, limit that to full text. So if you read through this article and that you decide that this would work for your research, like here I can even see where they're indicating a school that um, also had issues with dress code so this one would probably be appropriate and once again you do not want to go up to this bar and copy and paste to save your work what you're going to want to do is go over to site and one of the things that you're going to learn from using Explora is that there are so many formats used to cite professional papers not just MLA so we have tons of formats here but we are using MLA, so you're going to scroll down till you find MLA, copy and paste that, and then when you need to get back to the article, you can use the author and the title of the article and any other information that you might need to make sure that you don't lose it. So one of the things I really want you to remember is don't be lazy. So if we go ahead and we hit our back button, in addition to that research starter, we had 1,357 articles. So once again, don't just look at the first few and stop. You are a researcher for this project. You are on a mission to find evidence and proof. Dig deep. That's your job. And come see me. I'll help. This is my thing. This is what I like to do. So you aren't bothering me. This is my favorite time of year. Now we're going to take a look at books. And I'd like to say that actually your class, this incoming freshman class, you guys are actually better at using the library's catalog than any other class that has ever come through Lowell High School. And just because of the way we had to do things differently this year, it was kind of an unseen benefit. So you guys should give yourselves a little pat on the back. You actually have finding books in the library down. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this with you guys because you don't really need it. Um, I put, if we scroll down, I actually did add books under here just to kind of keep everything nice and neat. But you guys already know don't use the catalog up here unless you're just using it kind of casually. If you want to put something on hold, you do want to search here or use the link that I put under there for your class. Because if you want to put something on hold, you have to be able to log in. And in order to log in, you need to open it up in a whole new window. So um, here we are. For this one, I wanted to use bullying. 
So when I search for bullying, you can see that there's 49 resources available in the library. Now the first one's a video, the next one's an ebook, and another ebook, and then we get to a book. And actually this is a very good book. It's um, one of the gold standards in bullying. You guys already know how to tell if a book's in or out. This one is in. You are more than welcome to put it on hold like you have been doing and have me grab it for you. But since you are in the library, if you wanted to walk on over to the shelves and grab it yourself, that is perfectly acceptable as well. Then you can take it to the self-checkout center and check it out yourself. If you need help checking a book out, I'll walk you through the steps. Just come get me. So this one's located in the 300s. You do need every bit of this number to find it on the shelf. So you should jot down on a scrap piece of paper or carry your computer over to the shelves and make a note that it is 371.58 always. And just like when you guys chose books for class, you know what to do. You click on them, you read the little summary here, decide if that's going to work for your purposes, and once again, you can either put it on hold and I can grab it, or you can go take a look in the shelves yourself either way. And honestly, that is all you guys need to know about finding books in the library because you've been doing it for many months now. Okay, finally, we need to talk about what happens when we just do a random Google search to find an article. When you do a random Google search, you have to use a web page evaluation tool such as the CRAP test. Well, what's the CRAP test? The CRAP test decides whether a web page is CRAP or not. How perfect is that? It actually does exactly what it says. The CRAP test stands for currency, relevance, authority, accuracy, and purpose. Let me stress, if you use Google, you use the CRAP test and you're going to use this CRAP test worksheet. So what you're going to do, because there are no exceptions, if you Google an article, you're going to grab the CRAP test worksheet that will walk you through evaluating currency, relevance, authority, accuracy, and purpose. And here's how it works. For each section, you're going to give, for example, currency. You would give it a score between 1 and 10. For relevance, same thing. Score it between 1 and 10. Authority, same thing. 1 and 10, and so forth. So let's take a look at currency, and we'll kind of go through this one together. Currency is the timeliness of the information. Like when was the information published or posted? If you look at it and it was posted in the 90s when the internet was invented, probably not so great. If it was in the last couple of years, I would give it a decent score. Has the information been revised or updated? Something else you need to look at. Is the information current? or out of date for your topic. So you need to figure that in as well. And finally, are the links functional? So if you keep clicking around on the web page just to find one dead link after another, that means that they really don't keep up with their web page and that wouldn't be a good score at all. So you're going to take all of those things into consideration that were listed under currency and decide if it deserves a score of one unreliable, all the way up to 10, meaning excellent. Is it just okay? Maybe you'll give it a 5. And then you're going to do the same thing with relevance, meaning the importance of the information for your needs. So you'll take a look at everything listed underneath, give it an evaluation, and score it. Authority, meaning the source or the author of the information. Accuracy, the reliability, truthfulness, and correctness of the content. Um, one of the things to really look out for in this one is spelling grammar and typographical errors. If it's chock full of errors, I wouldn't trust it. And lastly, purpose, the reason this information exists. So once you have a score in each box, so you know, maybe we have a 10 here and a 5 here and a 3 here and so forth, you're going to add them all up to get your total. 
and you're gonna look in this box to decide how well your page did. If it scored between a 45 and a 50, use it, it's excellent. If it scored between a 40 and a 44, good, I'd still use it. If it was a 35 to a 39 and it's just average, mm, it depends. Have you really been struggling to find information? Well, then maybe, could you find something better? Maybe dig a little deeper. Um, for that one, you know, you might want to check with me or one of your teachers and we can help you decide. If it's 30 to 34, then it's just borderline acceptable. Again, I would check with me or one of your teachers and we can make that decision together. If it's below 30, there's just no alternative. You have to just toss it and start over and find a new article. So definitely below 30, not going to work. So once again, when you do a random Google search, you're going to use the crap test worksheet for every single article that you Google. So my advice to you as we wrap this up, question everything, apply the crap test to everything you find on the internet. It's unfortunate now, but there are actually people who get paid to fool you and write articles that aren't true. I mean, that's their actual job. We're kind of living in a pretty weird time right now. So definitely, if you see it on the internet, just be a little skeptical. Um, check it, fact check it. That's kind of what we're all doing now in this day and age. There is a video here that only takes five minutes. I'm not going to play it, but if you're struggling with understanding the crop test, meaning you know, what is it, why are we doing it, this is a really good video and it's actually even has a little bit of humor in it. You know, as, as much humor as we can find in research, but it, it is somewhat entertaining. So if you need a little bit more explanation, that's there for you. Well, you know, people once relied on publishers, editors, and subject matter experts to check the information they consume. But, you know, as we all know, the Internet's unregulated, so all bets are off. But here's the good news. If you stick with the sources I showed you, meaning Opposing Viewpoints, Explora, and Library Books, you can skip the crap test and you don't have to do the worksheet at all. So keep that in mind. You know, I know it's our, um, we kind of just want to go straight to Google, but this is the whole purpose of this lesson is to show you that there are other sites out there that are more credible and the ones that you don't have to check and make sure that they're accurate. So keep that in mind. Okay, this brings us to the end. If you have any questions, please ask me. Ask me, ask me, ask me. It's my job. It's why I'm here. If you need help, I'll help you find evidence in a credible source. I'll help you navigate opposing viewpoints. I'll help you navigate Explora. I'll help you decide if a source is credible or crap so we can go through that um, crap test worksheet together. And when we get to this point, I will even help you cite your sources in MLA format. We used to um, have a little bit more freedom during advisory and you guys used to be able to come see me during advisory. I'm not sure how we're going to work that this year since things are um, a lot more strict than they used to be. Um, but I will say that you guys have gotten really good about emailing me. And in fact, I even complimented your teachers um, your emails are very professional and nice, and I did not know that that is something that you guys actually learn in class, but I'm very impressed by the emails that you send to me. So that brings us to the end. Happy researching.